Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Currently in um, about the top 800 or so mythic. Um, just a couple updates here to the deck. I decided to go back to a full play set of March of Otherworldly Light and kind of mix some numbers in here. I wanted access to Brutal Cathar and Adeline as well. And then also Imidane's Recruiter. So. I kind of settled on three of each. I think Recruiter is definitely an amazing card, but there are times in certain matchups where you don't want a ton of them, like against the Mono Red matchup where you want something else to just survive. And so I think three feels right, at least for now. Adeline is really good in that matchup and just surviving and kind of holding down the board. And it's just a very powerful card by itself. And then with Brutal Cathar, you can also run into spots where you don't actually want four uh, in certain matchups where it's not as good and so you so it's sort of like you always want to see one but you you know you you can't have too many so i decided to kind of shift those numbers around a little bit and then in addition i also cut the one secluded courtyard um, just because now that we're running a full play set of march um, and also a full play set of intrepid adversary i've run into issues actually paying the the cost here of this to be able to you know to get the bonus so added an extra i think iganjo back up to a full play set of iganjo just going to sort of try that out we're still at uh, 22 land so i might end up shifting one of these iganjos into a plains but for the moment it feels good um and then i did shave one warden of the inner sky to kind of make room for everything as well as one thalia so somewhere around 11 one drops 10 or 11 two drops and then 12 or 13 three plus drops feels pretty good with uh the extra slots here for the removal so if you're new to my channel thank you so much for stopping by i really do appreciate you and for my returning viewers thank you guys so much again for coming back thank you i really appreciate it um i do want to give a shout out here to my members um, Kibo at the dedicated level, thank you so much again for supporting me and my channel. And all of those who support me at the initiate level, I really appreciate you guys. Um, without, I guess, any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into some games. I think that, you know, if you wanted to run Boros Convoke, certainly you could. It's just as strong of a deck, if not a stronger deck, but I just kind of wanted to run Boros Humans. I hadn't played it in a while, and it just feels like a fun deck to me, so I think there's a lot of similarities between this deck and Mono White Humans as well, and so they're all just kind of, I mean, even though there are pretty big spreads of different cards same sort of idea to the deck aggressive really low to the ground okay so up against what looks like possibly mono white humans definitely going to go ahead and play the aganja here so we're not taking damage and then uh, get uh, veteran going and if they attack we're definitely willing to trade there yeah, I didn't think they were going to, but recruitment officers can actually be kind of problematic in this matchup, um, just because they can turn into a lot of value over the course of a game. So let's go ahead and lead out here with Dahlia, just to kind of slow them down for a little bit. Especially being on the draw here, we, we are definitely playing a little bit more defensive. Okay, so they picked up another Copper Coat and a Thalia of their own. We have a nice hand here, it's just we kind of got... need some time to sort of get this going, so... Hopefully we have the breathing room next turn to start popping off with uh, Knight Errant, but we definitely are facing some potential damage here. I 
and it looks like their version is running Sanguine Evangelist, which you do see a lot more in like the, um, I, well, I guess you see it in Boris Convoke and also in Mono White Humans. I didn't opt for Sanguine Evangelist in this build, just because I really wanted Adeline for sort of like the staying power against Mono Red. But, you know, I wouldn't fault you to run Sanguine Evangelist. I think it's also a very strong card. But yeah, we're now definitely very much on the back foot. They've got access to Adeline, an adversary next turn, and a Copper Coat. I don't, I don't know that we're going to have the breathing room to kind of get this going. So we could try to trade here to kind of slow the damage coming in. Um, if we just take it, we'll drop to 17. And then we can play out our own Knight Errant. We'll go up to... 19 have one blocker and then if they don't have i guess if they just go like adversary next turn and push i mean we're facing seven ten thirteen seventeen yeah we're just we, we we can't afford to take that kind of hit i think we have to trade here unfortunately So yeah, not drawn land here is super rough with our hand, um, but I don't think we really have a whole lot of choice. I think we sort of had to make that trade just because playing the Knight Errant could have given them like a lethal attack. This definitely can be a tough matchup. Okay, so now if we block like this, can we survive? We're taking 8, 11, 15. I think these are our best blocks, though. Just have to get this stuff off the field. We're still probably just dead, but... I think those were our best blocks there. Yeah, and it's just going to be a little too little too late here, unfortunately. We kind of needed to be on the play and get our Knight Errant going before theirs. So, yeah, they had a very strong draw. Um, and I guess, you know, that's, you know, one potential for looking at running maybe a little bit trimmer near the top of the curve. I wouldn't really go too much fewer than about 12 3-plus drops, though, just because, you know, then you can run into issues with getting blown out by... Uh, temporary lockdown so you, you kind of want a nice sort of even curve we have about the same amount of creatures at both your your one mana cost two mana cost and three mana cost okay so against blue white this could be certainly an aggro version but it's most likely to be control so I think let's just go ahead and push out with Officer here. Just try to get damage in. No reason to reveal. Um, Battlefield Forge here yet. I, I mean, this is fairly minor. We're not going to take burn from it, but... Okay, so let's just push in and then, I guess, develop Adversary. Since we've got March, if they have Lockdown, we can at least deal with it, theoretically. If they have more than one lock down there just because one for wanting seems a bit strange since they haven't even taken damage yet but who am i to argue i think we'll just set up for another round of lockdown here potentially 
I guess the other option here is we could try to use like our march, but I don't really want to exile something here. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and just play out my stuff. We could try to wait with adversary, but they could be holding up counters, so I just want to get it in now. I think this deck runs something like 11 counter spells, so since we haven't got counter protection, just getting it on the field feels pretty good. Here we could Thalia pre-combat. Um, I kind of don't really want to play it pre-combat though. And I don't want to play the Myrix just yet since they've got, maybe I can get them to use their Field of Ruin before letting them know that I have Myrix. So I'll just play out the Battlefield Forge this turn with the plan of potentially playing Thalia here. And again, I'm open to playing Thalia because we've got March. Yeah, and we got him to use Field, which is amazing, because now we can get our Myrix safely down. Okay, looks like they're Jess guy. Or maybe they're they're probably running like high noon, I guess that's I'm guessing that's what this is. So the fact that they're willing to try to helix the Thalia makes me think that they don't have Sunfall on five. Um, they could still have it, certainly, but this kind of play makes me think that they don't. Now we can lead out with the recruitment officer. And then again, if they do happen to have um, another lockdown, we can have March ready. Here we're definitely going to use Officer over the Myrix token. And now we'll just kind of hold up Recruitment Officer Mana to keep getting value. Ideally we can wait for a while on our march and then when we um, get rid of the lockdown we can get extra triggers there on the adversary and, and actually pay for it so we could play officer here i mean it would be certainly fine mana wise um i don't know that i like opening that up to potential sunfall um although i guess like their previous plays don't really make sense if they have sunfall they, they might just not have the mana so they might still do it so we, we might be able to finesse this out here yeah, I, I guess there's enough reason here to play it. Since they do have like more just like single target removal here. This way we're still holding up officer's ability. And again, if they've got lockdown, we have answers for it. So I feel more like okay about putting both of the officers in play. And it also, it, it increases the clock and the, the pressure. Yeah, and they're going to use that, and that's fine. Since we still have one active here, we don't need to response with this just yet. So I do like running that out there on our last turn, for sure. And then again here, we're going to go for value over the Myrix token. We're not in like that much of a rush. They're not that close to being in lethal range.
Now we could get uh, Vanguard going here and then still hold up uh, Mirix mana, which I like. And also mana for potential lockdown as well. But I don't think we want to run out Brutal Cathar here. I think we just want to try to work off the Mirix token as much as we can, extract as much value as possible. They might be trying to use Realm Breaker just to get the land into play. And like, there's a, I suppose like there's a consideration here for getting rid of their Realm Breaker with March. I still think the Mirix token is probably just better. The other consideration is we could march the lockdown end of turn, and then we could be pushing four, six, eight, and dramatically increase the clock. But because we don't have the extra pump, I don't like that as much. So I think, let's just make the Mirix token here. It's a little bit more of a slow play, but I think for kind of those other reasons, I'm happy just kind of doing it that way. Now we could play out the Aganjo and then leave up mana for Mirix or March. Um, but I kind of like holding a Ganjo back also. And again, not putting everything we have onto the board. The other nice thing here is that if we leave this mana up and then end of turn March, we can then get the plus one plus one on everything with the uh, adversary. Yeah, and I think that like we also are holding March here for their anchorage if they try to activate it to be able to, to use as a blocker. All right, so now since they've got mana up, I'm less likely to try to go for the um, sort of force the game winning play here. Um, we're not gonna have lethal without it, which is unfortunate. Hmm. I kind of feel like they're holding a counter spell up though. So I think I just want to play Mirix here. Just play it kind of slow and steady. We've got inevitability here. And that's a really nice draw because now we can also have um, March ready for their Anchorage or Iganjo. So I think I'm going to tap it slightly different and leave the possibility of Mirix on the table just in case we want to play our land or do something different. So this kind of gives us like the most options here. We also could have played out the Brutal Cathar before the Recruiter um, and then still held up March, which would have been a little bit more damage. Um, so maybe that would have been correct. Yeah, I could actually see just totally going for it there, come to think of it. Maybe that like forces a counter. I guess like if we think that we've got it for sure, then that's probably right. I guess like this way, if something goes horribly wrong, we can still like set up for the long game with Mirix. So either our opponent just decided to rage quit or they ran into like a spike of lag or possibly just like super deep in the tank.
And they have quite a few timeouts here, so. Guess we will see shortly enough. But yeah, you know, I'm not sure how prevalent mono white humans is on the ladder. I think it's decently prevalent. That is a, that can be a very tough matchup for this deck. I guess it just sort of draw dependent, but I don't know, you know, kind of how you would shift it around if you were seeing that a lot and that was a serious problem for you. I do think I really like March quite a bit in this deck. Like, it gives you so much more flexibility against control. Um, and it gives you, like, the much needed breathing room against mono red. So, there are certainly, like, clunky interactions like March plus Thalia. But I, I think that, like, you get enough of a discount so you can kind of sort of make it work. And, like, you really do want to have both cards in your deck. Because Thalia is, like, so good against everything. I will say that I think a lot of decks are running three copies of Thalia, and mostly I cut it down to two just for kind of I wanted everything. <laughs> I just wanted extra slots. I think you can maybe get away with two, but uh, you know, you could go back up to three certainly, and I think it'd be fine. This matchup can be kind of... Oh, that's an interesting... Hmm. I thought this was the uh, World Soul deck. Maybe it still is, but... This matchup can be a little interesting. Um, a lot of it kind of revolves around Nyssa. If they can stick a Nyssa, you probably lose. And if you can deny a Nyssa before it can go off, you probably win. And I think that, like, you know, um, good players will certainly also wait to play Nyssa on turn four when they can play it and then, like, resolve a broker's hideout or something like that to deny the possibility of getting rid of it before it can activate. Um, and, like, what you can do there is you can just hold up March, waiting for them to play the first land, like, before the, the trigger finishes so that you can stop it from doing its thing. So that might be right, um, but I think also, like we just want to try to get there as quick as possible. They're not necessarily doing that, and we might have like one more turn even if they do. But it gets it can spiral really out of control super quickly. So here, I think I am gonna go for Knight Errant. Um, I don't think I want to. Yeah, I definitely don't want to play Rural Cathar. I want to hold that in hand. We could just push for five and it wouldn't be wrong because then next turn we'd be pushing for three, six, eight, eleven. So actually, I mean, that's a game winning play unless they play more like lands that produce life. So yeah, I'm probably going to actually just go for the Knight Errant here. I think it felt like it for sure was lethal. Then we could maybe do that play. And this deck doesn't run counters, so you don't need to worry about them holding up counter mana. Okay, I mean, this is pretty good, right? They might have ill-timed explosion. That is certainly a possibility. Um, so we're definitely getting probably one copper coat here. I think it might also be warden. And then the question is, do we play it or not? Because if they have ill-timed explosion, actually, they won't be able to cast it. Never mind. So I think it's probably Warden here, just for maximizing mana purposes. 
Because, like, next turn, we're, like, absolutely certain that we're going to be playing Recruiter, most likely. Yeah, well, they can't cast Explosion this turn because of Thalia. I wonder if they thought about that. Okay, Thalia number two is nice, but it's a... I don't know if it's going to be fast enough. Um... We could recruit her now. It's the best use of our mana if we don't want to try to like set up another big turn. But they're at 17, which kind of has me worried. Um, and they will definitely have mana for ill-timed explosion next turn. Hmm. Could also just go for a Knight Errant here. I think we kind of need to hit them this turn, though. So I think maybe we either play Recruiter or, or Vanguard this turn. Yeah, I'm probably going to go with Vanguard. This way I can hold up March in case I need it. And can still push for a decent amount. Plus this way... You know, having the haste in our hand, I think, is super important, especially if we, you know, can set up a turn where we can just get them with, with it. Yeah, there's the explosion that we were expecting. I guess the other consideration is, like, had we played Night Errant last turn, you know... We could have, you know, forced them to have like a forecasting cost, but they did anyways here. So I think there's a fairly high chance of that being the case. Now we can prevent Memory Deluge next turn by playing Thalia and I think we definitely want to do that. Um, we won't necessarily be able to use Otherworldly Light if they've got Nissa in hand, which could be awkward, but I think we've got to, got to kind of get going here. We could also play both Veteran and Plus Thalia, which I like. I think we just do that and then use the Aganjo to overlay. This also sets up like a decent potential attack with Recruiter. And it just kind of makes it slightly more annoying with the Thalia. And I think part of the reason, yeah, that I saved the recruiter is like you want your recruiter to be like the last card. Like you always want to have the looming threat of like haste for the win. And that's kind of why I favored playing the copper coat that turn instead of the recruiter. Here I think we just run out the brutal cathar.
there's a very real chance they could have Nissa here, which is unfortunate, but um, like I think we just we've got to get on the table here. We can't just sit here holding up March. We don't quite have lethal here with Imidanes. Um, we could try for another Knight Errant setup. I think that's probably the move. Question is if we want to go adversary into Knight Errant or if we want to hold adversary for a potential play afterwards and just search for two. I think searching for three is a little better because we could find another Imidanes. So I think I am going to go for it. Actually, never mind. We haven't got the mana. We've got to go for two. We could also just push and uh, hold up March here. That wouldn't be wrong either. Um, potentially dealing with the Spelunking. But I think we just want to find more action. And now, like, if we draw a land, we can go, like, Warden plus Recruiter, which is pretty powerful. Question is what did they find with their memory deluge? Since this list is running Sky Turtle, it's possible to have like more copies of that as potential interactive spells here. All right, so we have access to four mana um, with another Iganjo. We probably do float the mana here. I think we just need a turn of setup. Um, probably just Vanguard plus Warden here. Well, I suppose we could go Adversary plus Vanguard. Maybe we save the mana to float next turn. So yeah, I could see like Vanguard plus Warden and then Scry. And we're leading here with Vanguard first so that when we play the Warden, we'll have natural priority to be able to Scry. Um, assuming that gets through. Now I think there's a decent chance we should just go for the adversary play. I guess we could go warden here, but if we go for adversary, we'd have 
four power on the table, and then we could, if we draw another land next turn, could have uh, Warden plus Recruiter seems pretty good. So I think I actually do just want to float another Eganjo here. Just to kind of get this going. Okay, well, they're going to gain a bunch of life here, unfortunately. And they've got a ton of mana out. So here, I think we probably go for the Warden play to... They're going to be sacking this regardless, and so I guess they can just block our 3-1 here. But the um, question is, do we want to push Recruiter now? Probably not yet, honestly. We could go Warden plus Officer and then try for another turn, turn of setup. Yeah, I think I like that. So I think we attack with the adversary. Um, they're they're going to sack this. And then we'll use these ones here to try to set up another scry. Now we could use March to get rid of Spelunking so that they don't have these all come in untapped. Um, right now they have at least access to seven mana, but they don't have enough to go for double Deluge this turn. And they'll be getting back another three, five, I guess another five lands, so. 3, 5, 7, 10, 15. Yeah, they'd be able to do this. I guess it might be worth actually marching the Spelunking. Denying them like a second copy of Deluge seems pretty good. Um, let's see. Let's get rid of... <sighs> yeah, but we really kind of got to get on the board too. Hmm, this is close. This denies the second memory deluge. I'm not sure if it's worth it, but just tying up their mana for a turn. It seems like a good turn to do it. Okay, and they've got the Sky Turtle. So 
So it looks like they've got the loop going here. Yeah, basically, I think we kind of took too long to get things going, unfortunately. And now they can just use the virtue to essentially loop this with um, either like the other sky turtle or counter spells or they can go back and just get another world souls rage and that's probably just it unfortunately yeah i think we are just dead here unfortunately All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Unfortunately, yeah, it didn't do great this session, but I think it was nice to see some of those kind of tougher matchups. So we're currently 63% win rate with the deck, uh, 40 wins and 23 losses. So pretty close here, 62% on the play, 65% on the draw. And it looks like Boros Convoke is actually a decently tough matchup. We're a little less than 50%. Uh, mono red seems to be pretty good at seven and three, seventy percent, and then same with mono white. And also, I think our Azorius control matchup is pretty good, just with the the presence of the recruiters. Um, Demir is also looking good here for four and one, and then mono black, not really great here, thirty three percent, and then also against Orzov. Both of these are pretty tough matchups. They just have a lot of removal. Um, three and zero oh here against Lesnia enchantments. 2-0 here against Mono Blue. And this, I think we're 50-50 against the Reanimator kind of infinite combo deck, four-color control, um, or four-color combo. 2-0 um, against Bant, and 1-0 against Esper, and then looks like we lost to Jeskai, beat Mono Green and Simic, lost to Golgari again, probably just the removal. Um, beat Gruel, Pump, and one win here against the Teamer World Soul deck, but we just lost to, I think, the four color version that has like the recursion with like um, either the Colossal, whatever it was called, the Simic Sky thing. Um, also, the versions with Shigeki are pretty rough. And then I think one loss here to two domain. So overall, yeah, pretty happy with the deck, but. Um, you know, some matchups like Boris Convoke, which is very prevalent in the in the, the meta, is not great right now. So we will see you guys again in the next one. Thanks. Mm -hmm.